Make sure the mic is on. <laughs> checking around, maybe go for another bear, a fall bear, because I haven't, uh, I got that bear in Manitoba, so I can still get a tag in Saskatchewan. We'll see how that goes, though. I don't know. I'll have to check with the outfitter down the road and see uh, what he charged me to go get another bear. But believe it, believe me, bear meat is delicious, is it not? That's one thing about this week. We've eaten really well. <laughs> really well. We have, we have a couple of deer rounds in the slow cooker right now cooking for tonight. Um, this is Jason's last day here with me. Um, they've been cleaning up the deer that I got last night and I've been working on the videos so you can stay informed of what's going on. We've had, uh, we've been out scouting. We tried to, um, something new this year. I bought a muley tag. I don't think we're going to get one because um, neither one of us has hunted mule, mule deer before. But um, we, I bought a tag because I get an over-the-counter archery tag. I believe it's good till October 31st, so you never know. The thing is, is I don't like to hunt on people's lands without their permission. And the mule deer we're seeing are all on property um, that I don't have permission on. Where we usually hunt and where we do have permission for some reason, there's just no mule deer there this year. Like it's uh, it's strange because there's usually a lot of mule deer down there. That they heard right? you got a tag. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that could be. They heard that we got a tag. <laughs> but you know, like as far as the setup this year goes, we learned a lot. You know, I know you were mad at me on Tuesday night because I was moving around like crazy trying to figure out where the cameras what what would work best for the cameras after our Monday night where I shot my buck and you couldn't see anything <laughs> because you were behind me. So I, I rearranged the cameras and as far as cameras go, like, so we had the two cameras and we were able to then get good footage of the does when they came in for Greg and also good footage of Greg as the shooter. And one of the things that uh, I don't know if you've picked up on our videos from this hut, is we wore black in the blind. So you really can't, like, even, you know, when I was talking after I shot my buck, all you could see was two little white eyes and a little bit of my mouth, and I fixed it. I saw that, and we fixed it, and I, uh, I uh, face-painted the top part of my lip, and after that, you really couldn't see us. Uh, and it, with Greg, when I'm talking to Greg after he shot his doe, okay, you really can't see, even when, as he's, when he's shooting, you really can't see Greg, okay? And it's because it's, we, you know, we learned wearing camo, you can still see us, but wearing black, you can't. Yes, camo works great up in your tree stands when you're out in the foliage and everything, but when you think about it, most pop-up uh, blinds, um, a blind that you built, you usually make it dark inside, you paint it black or whatever. And uh, I hung actually camo um, burlap in the back, but I think I hung it about three thick almost, just to help block the light down a bit. Because when I was first out there, the first couple of days, like I could see the deer were spotting me right away. They were starting to come down the trail and their, their heads were up and they were looking right at me. Like, they still didn't know I was there because another thing about a deer is they see movement. They don't see the same as we do. So as long as I was still, it was okay. But uh, I thought, okay, we just need to darken this up a little more to make it more invisible 
So you can reach around, you can lift the bow, you can move your head. Um, we actually had a coyote come in the other day, and I was turned around talking to Jason, who was sitting behind me, and I spun my head back around, and that coyote spun around right away and took off back down the trail because he's seen me move. And they have quite sharp ice, eyesight. So yeah, you, to, um, a big part about hunting is stealth, um, being invisible. Um, and I'm not talking just invisible to the eye, also your scent. We've learned a lot about scent control this year. Yeah. Uh, that when we went bear hunting this spring, we, uh, we um, found uh, that, that bear that I did get, he came in, Jason doesn't like cats, so watch this. <laughs> <laughs> that bear came in. He came right to the bottom of the tree stand ladder. And he looked up, and I was looking down at him, and he looked up at me, and he gave out a growl of a snort, and away he, he went, and I thought that was probably the last we are going to see of him. But it's that time of year, and the uh, sow that had come in uh, was in heat. So he wasn't about to give up on that sow. He was over in the bushes grunting for her to follow him, but she ignored him and she continued to feed. And yeah, he just had to come back. <laughs> but hunting this time of year, one, it's wonderful. Last year we had to, like hunting at the same time, we had to dress like polar weather because it was, it was really cold last year. This year we were dressed like this and it was great. And that's what we like about the early archery season. We, you know, we grow uh, every year. We get better and better. We learn things, you know, like as far as cameras go, uh, I learned we need to add another camera in the blind for a third. We had enough cameras. It's just we didn't have the one angle we never had was us in the blind until after after our shots. So we need to add that third angle. And uh, I'm not quite sure what kind of camera we're gonna get for that. But the cameras that we do have, uh, we're learning more and more about them and more and more about how to, how to film with them. And it's getting much much better well that's that's one thing do i seen in one of the videos it's a fellow that i can't remember which youtube or it is but he was out hunting and he basically self-films his hunts and he says you know it gets to the point where you have to decide what's more important the hunting or the filming and it almost gets to that at times like um if you watch the video where i get my dough you can see we got some beautiful camera shots. She's totally broadside for me and everything, but we don't have all the cameras rolling. So I'm busy turning on cameras and I'm trying to focus in and I'm not getting the bow up. By the time I get my bow up, she's turned around, she's got her butt facing me. And uh, so I had to wait for a, a shot. I seen my opening. I thought, well, I don't want to, I don't want to get her in the gut. So I shot forward, just tried to get just behind your elbow there and was trying for a heart shot, and it worked out very well. Um, but the thing is, is again, like I could have had that broadside shot when she was there broadside if I wasn't filming. So I hope you are enjoying these films because it's not easy to hunt and film at the same time, but we do do it so you can uh, be on the adventure with us because every every hunt is an adventure. It's, it's just Definitely awesome. Is. And speaking of self-filming, you know, like we had, We've had a lot of laughs this week, most of it at our own expense. But last night I gave Greg the chips for the hunts, and he goes, well, there's nothing on this chip. And I go, well, there has to have been. And so I kicked myself all night because I never, I obviously didn't hit record or something silly like that. And then this morning, I'm thinking about it, and I said, no, I filmed a bunch of B-roll on that chip. So there's got to be something on it. And what I had done was taken the chip out of one camera and put it in the little uh, chip holder that I have, the little uh, SD card holder, and then put another chip into camera one and then took it out, put it in the holder, and 
didn't touch the chip in camera two. So, yeah, one, one camera one had film on it, but the second chip had nothing on it. But this morning I went and got the chip out of the second camera and everything was there. So, <laughs> it's, you know, <laughs> you know, Greg, last night, he's filming, uh, he has to self-film with two cameras. He has a little Samsung that he has out in the window. And then uh, he has, <laughs> I think you'll see uh, when you see the footage of him, and then he has his uh, safari on top of the uh, on top of the bow, so he's working two cameras, and I'm working two cameras. Mine are a little easier, but anyway, he's a, he he gets the little safari, and he's got the does coming in, and then for some reason he turns it back to the fawn that followed them. So he's not, he's actually on the wrong deer. <laughs> well, part of the problem is, is, is uh, my eyes aren't what they used to be. And those small screens on the camera, I can't see them. You know, like I'm struggling to see the deer and stuff. Uh, so I'm sitting there and I'm going, I'm not seeing a deer, I'm just seeing bushes. Yet I followed her in. And then I start turning it back and I go, oh, there's a deer, okay. But it's the wrong deer. <laughs> so I'm filming the wrong deer. I'm not filming the deer that I'm shooting at. I'm filming the, the deer that's off to the side, one of the smaller ones. And uh, yeah, so I really didn't capture the footage. So that's why it's another good thing that we have more than one camera because um, the the when we went out with Jay, when Jason got his buck in the video uh, buck down, it was the same thing. I'm behind Jason and I've got the camera going. And I can see the limb of the bow, so I'm going, okay, well, I must be in there. I must be able to see the deer. Now, we got home, and that deer wasn't on the chip at all. Like, all I see was the limb of the bow. I was zoomed in too far. I, again, I wasn't wearing glasses. And it's, like, my glasses I only need for reading, so I can't look through the scope with them. And, again, you want to limit your movement when you're hunting, because if you're moving all around, like a Tuesday night, Jason was talking about that. I was a little upset. I'm thinking, like, the deer aren't going to come in if you're back there banging around and zipping bags and pulling the crap out and clipping and banging and moving around. Like, they're just not going to come. Like, this is a totally useless thing. And it was. We didn't see anything Tuesday. But um, the thing is, too, is you have to remember, once you start pressuring the deer, it's, they get very stealthy very fast. Um, all animals do. Uh, usually, the best way to uh, hunt is... Have a, like if you can, if you have a big enough property in that or a big enough area, is have more than one site that you're hunting at. Because if you take a, take a deer or a bear from one site, don't hunt that site for a week. Give it five six days of peace and rest, and where they're not being pressured. And when you go back, you'll probably see one again. We went into that site on Tuesday. We went in on Wednesday. We went in on Thursday, and we didn't see anything those few days. Um, we heard some, I seen one off in the bushes, uh, couldn't get a shot for sure, like all I seen was a, a flash of it going by heading down south. And uh, even last night when we got those, that deer, when I got that deer last night, I, you'll see it in the footage that I had the camera set up and they're way down the trail, but that's like with a crossbow, it's way too long of a shot, it's probably close to 100 yards. And she walks out and she stops and then the two little ones come, come walking behind her and they turn and they start coming down but then they turn and follow her because she walked straight across and it was probably half an hour before she came around and came in from the west right at the bait site she came out of the bushes like we just saw some she was there and um, but she's a nice size doe uh, she's a full size doe and a lot of people say, oh, what about the, the little ones? No, those little ones are big enough that they'll be all okay on their own. And I do feed them all year. Uh, I put uh, alfalfa out for them in the winter and everything. There's always lots of food. Um, we do make sure we don't shoot any fawns that are still needing their mother. Um, or we don't shoot any deer that uh, the, the little ones still need their mothers around. Um, and that's another education curve that you have to learn. Like I said, the, that uh, other doe, um, she sent her uh, young ones off um, and uh, and yes I'm not saying don't shoot those um, TR chose to take one of those uh, they are very tasty they're young you know 
Um, but the thing is, is I like to have a bigger doe because I like more meat. Here we're only allowed one tag a year. You know, so if I take a small deer, well, I'm only getting maybe 30, 40 pounds of meat. Um, with this doe here, I'm figuring about 80, 90 pounds off her. Yep. Nice. We just carry most of the, like, we've got the deer quartered and the back straps off and everything, and I just carried that tub into the shop to start processing it, and I can guarantee you that that's a heavy tub. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that buck that you got, what do you figure you got for meat? Did you weigh that, or? But I didn't weigh all of it, but deer as I could figure, I got 90 pounds. 90 pounds. So there's 180 pounds of deer meat, you know? And yeah, it can get expensive. Like when you're feeding them all year and stuff, like um, those bags of corn that I put out that are about $12 a bag, Canadian. Um, these square alfalfa bales that I get, they're $12 a bale. But in the winter, I don't feed them as much. I just make sure that there's some extra food there. And then when spring comes, I slow down. But around hunting season, uh, yeah, they're used to, they know where it is and they come. And we had a lot of deer this year. There was a lot of does and a lot of bucks. Um, unfortunately, the bucks didn't cooperate for me, but that one cooperated for Jason. He, he came in and uh, he's not huge. He's not a monster buck, but he is a nice buck. Yeah. So, but please like, share, and subscribe. And don't miss any videos and we'll keep you informed. Uh, there's, uh, I'm working on a few videos right now that will be coming up in the near future. The, the so yeah, stay with us. I, I I'd like to do a video a week if possible, but it doesn't always work out that way. But right now I'm laid laid off. I'm not working again, um, so it should be easier for me to get down to the, doing some more editing and that. We'd like to do some meat processing, some more cooking. Um, so my bear meat, I give to somebody that has never eaten bear. They looked at me like, you eat bear? I went, bear is delicious. Um, even Jay said, I think this yeah. was your first year having bear. And yes, bear, believe it or not, is very delicious. Um, I gave some to the, it was the landowner that lets us hunt deer on his land. And I gave him some of the bear roasts that I made uh, with potatoes. And I just a little thing to put in his microwave and heat up. He texts me back. He says, that has to be up there with the top meats I've eaten. He says, that was really good. He says, thank you for introducing me to bear meat. He says, I'm going to have to get me a bear. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're ever wondering about bear, it is very, very good. The only thing is you want to make sure it's cooked. For sure. For sure. You want to make sure it's, they say 170, I say 180 or higher, and you're guaranteed there won't be any problems. I put those roasts in on high for six hours. We went out and hunted. We come back after about seven hours. My slow cooker goes on to warm then. We stuck the meat thermometer in. The first one we cooked was reading like 190. 190. And then the one we just cooked yesterday, when I checked it, it was reading 200. Like, you don't even need a knife to cut that meat. It's yeah. just, it's basically what you'd call overcooked. Yeah. But it is delicious and it just falls apart. It just, you just take a fork and it just peels apart. And it is so juicy and so tender, it just melts in your mouth. It's just, uh, it's just awesome, really. And you know, if I could, I would rather eat bear meat all year round, but uh, it's it doesn't work out that way. Usually, our wild meat doesn't last that long unless yeah. we start getting more hunting. Like I said, I have a mule deer taken. We get a mule deer that that'd be another like off a mule deer, uh, a fair sized one. You're gonna get uh, over a hundred pounds of meat. They're big deer. And uh, I was in the video too. I want to point out, I put in for moose tag this year. Each year since I've lived out here, the past three years now, I could have shot a moose, but I don't have a tag. I didn't get drawn again this year. What did we see this year? We were out scouting for mule deer. We saw four moose. We know where the one lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no. I don't have a moose tag, so no moose again. And I love moose meat. That's probably my favorite meat out of all the wild meats. But uh, I don't know, have you got anything else to add? Well, on the subject of mule deer, Greg's gonna be putting up a, a scouting for mule deer video uh, that we did one morning when we were out. And like Greg said, 
we don't have permission to hunt on anyone's land. And this Saskatchewan is all private land. There's very little crown land uh, in the southern half of, of Saskatchewan. So, and it's important, really important, that you have the landowner's permission. But we went out scouting one morning, and uh, when you see the video, it's ghosts in the mist. It had to be the foggiest morning I've seen in a long time. But it was fun. And, you know, uh, we did do a stalk, you know, uh, if you want to call it that. <laughs> well, like, like, Jay, like I said, I don't like to shoot uh, deer. It was an early morning. The farmers were not working. It was wet. It was damp. And I have hunted on that piece of land before. I was out doing some coyote shooting. So they gave me permission to hunt coyotes on that, on that part, of, part of land. So I thought, well, those muleys are there. I'll do a stock. And if I get a shot at one, I'm going to take it. You know, and hopefully... If the landowner did come along and say, well, you let me hunt coyotes before, you know, like, and hopefully I wouldn't have too much of a problem with them because I've talked to them before and they know who I am. Um, but yeah, like, part of the problem is, is if people come up from the city or whatever and they do what I call the drive-by shooting. They drive around in their trucks with their rifles, they see a deer in the field, they stop, they shoot it, and then they're driving the truck right out into the guy's crop and stuff to pick this deer up. And that really ruins it for all of us, you know, yeah. like the, the landowners are very, very uh, skeptical on giving uh, permission to people they don't know. Um, I got permission from uh, Lyle, you know, and now I'm getting known in the area because I live here. So I don't have much trouble getting permission. But, you know, in reality, all my life, I think all the places I've asked for permission, I've been turned down maybe three times, two for sure maybe a third time. Um, and, you know, once you talk to them, shake their hand and uh, talk to them for a little bit, they usually, yeah, okay, go ahead, you know, like they, you know, but yeah, to go out there and just take your quads and stuff and go on people's land, they really don't like it. Yeah. And it makes it really hard for others, you know, and I know it's scary to go out and ask for permission, but that's the best way to do it. Go out early, do your scouting, uh, figure out where you want to hunt, and go up and bang on some doors. Because if this guy is not going to give you permission, the guy right down the road may, you know. Uh, but, yeah, please, um, go to the, talk to the landowner, shake his hand, let him know who you are, you know. And uh, a lot of times you'd be surprised. They're very friendly, very friendly people. Usually they are. And speaking of, Greg's going to have to do some serious editing here, but I'm going to backtrack to when he talked about hunting multiple sites. Uh, he met a gentleman named Wayne who is about a mile down from where we actually hunt. And he's given us permission to hunt in his yard, believe it or <laughs> yeah, not. It is, yeah, and yeah. so... Uh, another video that's coming up will be our tour of Wayne's yard. Well, I think I might put that in with the scouting video too, like because uh, we were there that day. Yeah. Checking the cameras because I put some yeah. cameras up. And yes, he has a huge yard um, surrounded by bush. Um, it's not, it's not like a big thick forest out around his yeah. house, but it, it's thick enough that there's deer in there and there's fox in there and there's, there's stuff walking around. And he has a garden, you know, and Part of it is, is yeah, he doesn't mind if I take a deer or two because they're in there eating his apples and his carrots yeah. and that stuff. Everything else. And, and his wife, his wife, this this spring, they had a a, a young muley, <laughs> and he's sleeping right in the driveway, and she wants to leave, and she's trying to shoo this deer away, and he's just looking at her like, "What's your problem?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so over the like, as I said, we we grow every year, we learn more. We, we understand our equipment better. Uh, I know I gotta buy an assassin now. <laughs> but other than that, you know, this hunting season, the 2019 hunting season, has been our best season yet. 
and really springs for better to come in the future. Our systems are getting better. Uh, when, I don't know, Greg, how much footage he's put off about the blind, but next spring uh, we're going to be planting Virginia creeper all around the blind to have something that grows up and just makes it look like a bush. Uh, you know, and try to do a natural camo. Yes. Um, we'll try it. We'll, we'll keep you posted. We'll show you. I'm going to hang check the wire. I'm going to put the plants of vines around the bottom. Um, see what grows good in Saskatchewan. Uh, uh, Mary has some Virginia creeper out back. She's not had much luck with it. But then there's also uh, like morning glories and stuff. There's all kinds, have a nice there's all big kinds of plants there. that we can put around there. Uh, you know, I mean, like, I, I'm... As far as climbing stuff go, I'm kind of leaning towards clematis and their nice flowers. But, you know, they, I'll do some research this winter and come up with what would be best. It may be a mixture of things, but in, in two or three years, that blind will just look like a bush, maybe with a flowering bush, but we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully it won't be too much maintenance to cut out the, the shooting window holes and the, uh, keep the door clear so we can get in. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and that's, the, you know, the, like, I hunted quite a bit as a young man, um, up into my 30s, and then I came west, and of course, I didn't have any friends that hunted, I didn't know, and I left, I'd sold all my gear before I came here, and uh, see, I used to hunt with my brother a lot when I was, you know, I was, I was, I had my first gun when I was 10 years old, uh, which was bought by my brother for me, uh, 22, and um, I had a pellet rifle before that. And he used to take me out and they taught me gun safety, they taught me how to hunt. We used to do a lot of hunting in Ontario back then. Um, but again, I'm probably like most, I went and started chasing the dollar and work became the more important thing in my life. And I kind of gave up hunting for a number of years. And it's only been, what, four years that I yeah. decided to start hunting again. I actually had to reapply for my pal and everything. Again. And I am learning because there's new technology and new techniques. So I'm constantly watching YouTubes and I'm learning from the people on YouTube. But I'm also, from my knowledge of before, what I knew about hunting animals and stealth and everything. Because we didn't have cameras back then. We used to have to go, we'd have to find the trails. And so I know where to look for them. I know where the animals are. Yeah. But, like I said, I'm learning with this new technology. Uh, it, it's, it's wonderful in many ways. You know, and um, so yeah, and we'll keep you posted when we when we see something and come up with a new idea. Plus, I I do a lot of DIY stuff because hunting doesn't have to be expensive. You know, no. um, like anything else, fishing these days, everything everything costs so much. You know, but there's a lot of things if you have the time, you can do yourself and save yourself a few dollars. I just made a deer spreader. I took a piece of two by six, a piece of chain, a few bolts and there you go you got your deer spreader um of course block and tackle or come along to lift it up well you're going to need that but you're going to need that even if you buy a deer spreader but deer spreaders i was looking at them at cabela's like they can run up to like 70 dollars yeah. and also this is a piece of metal with a couple hooks on the end with a loop on it to lift yeah. lift your game up you know and i built one for 15 bucks so you know that video is coming up too, or probably be up before this one. I don't know. Uh, it depends when I get into the video editing and how this goes. But I guess that's about it uh, that I've got to say today. I don't know if you have anything else to add to this. Not a lot. I mean, just this is twenty. The twenty nineteen whitetail season has been the most fun I've had since the bear hunt. <laughs> you know, like Greg and I when we get together. You know, yes, we yell and scream at each other occasionally. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm in the background trying to figure out camera angles, or he's, you know, or, or whatever. But you know, it's a learning experience. I hadn't hunted either. I I I hunted uh, heavily in my late teens and and my twenties. Something happened in my life when I turned 30 that ended my hunting career. Uh, 
until four years ago when Greg and I decided that we should start hunting again. And, and it is different today. Here, uh, I grew up here, you know, and I've hunted in Alberta uh, in, in my late teens. I, I was uh, in Calgary for a few years. And so I hunted in Alberta. But it's different today, but it's better too. We have technology that we never had. We have uh, the ability to do this, to do this, this, what we're doing. Talking to a camera, filming our hunts, and having a venue to put them on. And, and my interest, yeah, I like to shoot a deer, but really, my interest is the camera gear. And I'm hoping if things go well this winter, uh, I'm putting up, I love my little Canon Vixias. They're, you know, the more I learn about them, the more I like them. But their problem is the sensor is too small for low light. So I'm researching cameras and I'm hoping by next spring, winter or spring, that I can come up with the funds to, because nobody's sponsoring us, to <laughs> come up with the uh, funds. YouTube, YouTube included, included. We're not getting any money from YouTube. No. We need at least a thousand subscribers before they'll yeah. even look at monetizing yeah. any of our videos. But it, money aside, I, I'm looking at upgrading a, at least one camera this year. Um, if, if I can, you know, and I, I love the Canon, um, you know, and, and it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, but if you're, if you're shooting video, there's lots of guys who shoot video with DSLRs and the new mirrorless. But really, we're, 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 video, we're, we're filming hunts. And so we need video equipment. And, you know, so I'm, I'm researching new new camera gear. I've got my eye on, on two of the Canon. There's an upgrade uh, in the Vixia line. Uh, the G50 and G60 are uh, 4K cameras. And uh, so I'm looking at those. They have the one inch sensor that will give us a little better low light because right now we're shutting down a good 25 minutes sometimes before the end of hunting because we have no light. The cameras are just not working. Uh, the other one is quite high up and that's in the XF, Canon XF series and that's the 400. But that's a very expensive, uh, very expensive camera but it has infrared and it has all kinds of gadgets on it. But my focus is the cameras. Uh, I, I, I love, I could just sit there and film the deer, you know, and it wouldn't really, you know, yes. I should, have, I should have left him on the camera on Monday and I would have got the buck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. And I offered. <laughs> and I did offer, so don't say I didn't. <laughs> but I, I'm glad we had a very good year um, with our uh, whitetail this year. Um, we did what we wanted to do. We went out there within the first uh, two weeks. We both got our deer. Um, TR came out. I took TR out. Um, he hasn't hunted in a number of years. He's just a young fella. He dates my uh, stepdaughter. And he went and got a tag and he wanted to get a deer. I said, sure, let's go. He took that small one, but that was his choice. You know, probably not a choice I would have made, but then I've been hunting for a few years again. Uh, the first year I was out, I probably would have took a small one like that too. Yeah. You know, um, actually, you did. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I did get a smaller one. The first one I got, she was probably maybe, I don't know, two year old or whatever, but we only got, what, 40, 50 pounds of meat off Yeah. Of 40 pounds, I think. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't much, but she was tasty. Yeah. Uh, tender. You have to remember the beef industry wasn't built on five year old steers. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all young animals. And, uh, the, the younger the animals, the better. These guys that go, for, uh, we're not trophy hunters. So if you're looking at our channel to learn how to hunt trophy deer, that's not our prerogative. 
our prerogative is meat hunting. Um, the bear I took this year was uh, your average bear. He weighed 140 pounds. I could have sat there and waited. I had four days left in my hunt. And I could have waited for the monster bear to come in. But you know that monster bear that weighs 500 pounds or 450 pounds? He's not going to He's not gonna taste like this bear that we're eating right now. Like he's, they're mainly grind. And those, if you're going to wait for your uh, trophy deer and go out during the rutting season, um, the stag tastes a lot different. Like that buck that yeah. Jason got now, or in the early season here, he's not in the rut. And he's very tasty. We've already tried one of his roasts, and he's very tasty. And I'm about to try another. So. Yeah, and about to try a couple more. We've got them in the slow cooker yeah. right now. I've got them cooking for supper tonight. But I think we ram rambled on long enough. I think we have too. We should l let these people go. I don't know, even know if you're going to watch this or enjoy watching it, but we hope you do. And uh, yeah, stay with us. And like I said, please like, share, and subscribe uh, our videos. Um, it will bring up our ratings, and hopefully we can get more videos out to you. Um, Jason was going on about the cameras and that. That is his focus. I don't think we need a whole lot of big expensive stuff. I think we do quite well with what we got. But it's keeping it simple too, yeah. to a point, you know. And we are doing this on our own and we're learning about the cameras and stuff too. It's a, a big learning curve in, in the camera department for me. Um, so the hunting, we're learning more and more about the new technology and it seems to be working for us. So stay with us and you can try some of the stuff we're trying and I hope it works for you too. Have a good one. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.